People say I'm a lot like my dad and my grandma. We have the same eyes, the same nose, the same sense of humor, and the same unruly stubbornness. So of all the wonderful things that I've inherited from them, is it possible that I've also inherited the Huntington's disease gene? Huntington's disease is an inherited fatal genetic disorder that causes the progressive breakdown of nerve cells in the brain. It deteriorates a person's physical and mental abilities during their prime working years. Over a 10 to 20 year period, the person will lose their ability to talk, walk, and eat, requiring 24-7 care. Huntington disease is a neurological um, condition that affecting um, your brain and it is an inherited um, condition that caused by a um, mutation or what we call miscoding of um, one of our genes. Um, the particular gene is called Huntington gene and it is located on chromosome 4. People usually when they get tested they will get a result as a number of what we call CAG repeats. So um, Huntington disease um, is caused by the miscoding of the gene and the coding um, in this particular case is actually what we call CA, CAG coding. Everyone is born with the Huntington protein, but people who develop Huntington's disease have an extended CAG repeat. A CAG repeat of 26 or less is considered to be normal and is what most people carry. A repeat which ranges from 27 to 35 is also considered normal, but can be more unstable. 36 to 39 repeats is considered abnormal, but symptoms of HD are typically seen much later in a person's life. Lastly, a CAG repeat of 40 and above is abnormal and always results in the development of HD. Huntington disease is what we call autosomal dominant um, disease. Basically, the gene is a dominant gene. So you only need one gene in order to get Huntington disease. Um, so um, if you have the, the disease, each of your kids will have 50% chance of um, inherited the gene from you. My grandmother and father both have an abnormal CAG repeat of 42. Myself and my two younger siblings are all at risk for inheriting the gene. Huntington's disease has um, been in my life for as long as I can remember. I, Growing up, I knew that my grandmother had Huntington's disease. Um, I guess I didn't really know exactly what that meant um, until, you know, I was into high school because that's really when she was, you know, showing visible symptoms and then I think that's when I like had the conversation with my dad about what that could mean for him and for me and my siblings. So it's always just kind of been there and been something that was a possibility. Um, and, you know, then finding out that my dad had Huntington's disease, that was, that was really hard. I'm David Russell. I'm Jasmine's father. Uh, I'm 40, gonna be 48 years old. Uh, I was diagnosed with Huntington's in uh, 2015, uh, I've been symptomatic since like 2012. Uh, my, my, I got it from my mother, uh, who was diagnosed in 1998, um, and she is in a nursing home. She's been in a nursing home for five and a half years. Um, 
she's down to 84 pounds and very, very uh, at the end. When she very first started having symptoms, she was working for Sam Heck, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since Southern Arizona Mental Health. She worked for mm. the state for almost 20 years. And then right before she got her 20 years, she ended up getting mm. uh, laid off. Mm. She, because they said that she didn't have a, a degree mm. in medical records, huh? A certificate? Mm. Yeah. And then... Um, mm. uh. But then she worked at Intuit for a little while, right? Mm. But then that was the last job she had, was at Intuit for like mm. a little while. Right? Mm. Yeah. And then it started becoming much more obvious. Uh. Right? Mm. And then you and then you got and Ray left and you got tested. Mm. Or you got tested and he did he leave after you got mm. tested or before? Mm. Before, right? Uh. After. Yeah. It's a, it's a big burden. Nobody wants to deal with it. Mm. My grandfather died in 1985, 86, uh, when I was a teenager uh, of Huntington's, and he was uh, a very ornery, angry man. Um, he and I didn't really understand why I knew he had Huntington's disease, but I didn't really know what Huntington's disease. I really, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of information back then. You know, there was no internet, there was no anything like that. So, you know, it was just, you know, you know, kind of he died of Huntington's, but you know, no clear kind of picture for me. Huntington um, disease can cause symptoms in three main categories. Um, the, um, the first one is what we call a motor symptoms, or you can think about it as a physical symptom. So um, the um, classic um, um, physical symptoms that people are typically familiar with is um, an involuntary movement we call chorea. Um, chorea actually means um, dance. and um, it is a uh, involuntary movement that uh, look like a flip and flow of your um, your arms, your legs, and it can affect um, any part of the body. Um, Huntington disease, um, besides it can cause um, chorea, it can also um, causing other um, abnormal movement also. For example, some patients will have Parkinson-like symptoms. Um, some patients will have even ticks like symptoms. It can also um, cause the um, gait and balance problem, um, swallowing difficulties, um, uh, weight loss, and also slow speech. Um, then the other sets of um, symptoms that um, one can get is the uh, cognitive symptoms. Early on, it is usually mild, and you may notice a person has uh, personality change, um, they may have um, difficulty at work, difficulty with complicated tasks, difficulty um, with multitasking, difficulty with um, organization skill. They may think slower or have hard time um, talking, hard time like thinking of the words to say. And um, as a disease progress, cognitive function can get worse um, eventually to the point of dementia. Um, the other sets of symptoms is the psychiatric symptoms. Um, the symptoms actually can be varies. Um, it could be depression, could be anxiety, could be sometimes irritability or aggression. I started having uh, uh, minor psychological pro- problems and, and minor cognitive problems around 2000, late 2012, 2013. I uh, started uh, noticing these things um, uh, just, you know, incrementally as time went on, you know, that things just started getting worse and worse until, um, you know, it started affecting my job at, towards the end. Um, I had, I was using alcohol, um, you know, I was started abusing alcohol. And, 
I started having panic attacks. I started, you know, having a lot of problems performing the tasks at work because the stress was, um, you know, started to become overwhelming. And I ended up losing my job. I ended up overdosing on uh, a bunch of pills, uh, like 90 plus pills I took. And, and I woke up in the, or, you know, last thing I remember after I took them was that um, I told Angie that, that I did it and that, you know, and the last thing I remember is the paramedics coming in the room. And then I woke up in the hospital, you know, however long later, uh, on 24 hour watch. Dad is having a particularly bad day. Um, so he called me uh, this morning and told me that he had fell down and broke his TV. Um, and he was really upset and crying and um, and and obviously like disoriented. Um, you know, when when things like this happen, like when he falls down or. Um, you know, he could have a concussion right now, and I can't even get him into my car to take him to the hospital, and it's just, it's just really hard, and he's not, he's not him right now, he's not my dad right now, and, and, and that is frustrating to me, but it, what's more frustrating is how frustrating it is for him and how much how much I can't help him you know he's just he doesn't feel like himself and he doesn't he just he's so hard on himself all the time because things like this happen and and he just he feels like his mind is just deteriorate, deteriorating before his eyes. And there's nothing that anybody can really do to slow it down. And I, I'm, I feel so out of my league right now. Because I want to do everything to help him, but I don't know what I can do. The Huntington's Disease Society of America is the largest nonprofit volunteer organization dedicated to improving the lives of everyone affected by HD. HDSA has 21 centers of excellence throughout the country where people with HD and their families receive comprehensive medical, psychological, and social services. The Society also has 46 local chapters and affiliates across the country with more than 190 support groups. As a licensed clinical social worker for the Huntington's Disease Society of America, Marjorie DeWald leads the local support group in Tucson, Arizona. I have been working for HDSA for three years this month, and our job description is that we manage a helpline. So I have a separate phone line, a separate phone um, with an outgoing message that's really welcoming to people and letting them know that, that uh, if they have any issues with HD, that they should talk to me, give me a call back, um, email me, come to our support groups. So I manage that line and try to have that be like the first line for people when they reach out. And that number is on the national website, so it's, a, it's just a helpline in Tucson. So I manage that. And I do a support group once a month, um, making sure that people know there's a place they can go for support and to meet other folks who are dealing with the same issues with Huntington's disease. And that ends up being um, ca several categories. People who are at risk for Huntington's disease, who currently are suffering from symptoms of Huntington's disease, and a lot of caregivers and family members um, all together. And the reason we do it all together is we just don't have high numbers of folks in Tucson who need support. Um, other cities, they separate those groups out because there really are different needs. And if there were enough or, or a need, I could do that as well. So those are my two main roles. So tomorrow I'm going to my first genetic testing 
um, appointment. Um, I'm seeing Dr. Leslie Benson, who is at um, Banner Medical Center in Tucson. I think making the decision to get tested is um, is always, I mean, it's, in, it's incredibly difficult. I, before this point, didn't think that I wanted to get tested at all. Um, I, it's, I, I didn't really understand how knowing that result would change the way that I live my life. But then, you know, you start getting a little bit older. Um, in my case, you get married and you start having to think about stuff like this and you start you start having to think about having babies and you know growing older and <laughs> and thinking about your future um and you know while i'm 25 and am not even close to wanting to have kids right now um it's it's something that i have to think about because i have that genetic factor i'm really nervous to get tested i i it it puts butterflies in my stomach every time I think about it or talk about it. Um, but I'm I think I'm definitely ready for it. Um, regardless of what the result is, I'm ready for it. I really like to think that I don't have it, but I know that if I did, that I would make the most of it and I would, you know, I would still try and make an impact in the world and in my community and be a good person and um, so I don't know, I don't know if I have it or not, I really don't, but I'm just, I'm really hoping that I don't. <laughs> Yeah, there is a new uh, research study that is coming up um, for Huntington person, which is a gene silencing um, technique or generation HD1 that many of you may have heard. So in this particular research, um, the um, participants will have to um, get the spinal tap every two months um, to um, uh, get the drug administra administrated um, through the uh, spinal fluid. The scientists would like to see whether the drug is actually effective in help um, uh, improve the Huntington um, patient or not. This is going to be the phase three of the study. This drug already uh, has been proven um, that it is safe and, and tolerated in um, human in phase one and two trial. And it's also shown that it actually reduced the Huntington protein, which is a protein that is a problem in our case. So um, this is the next phase where, where we want to see whether it is going to, um, you know, produce any um, clinical improvement um, in a human um, person or not. So it's just so exciting because there's, um, the way I like to think about it is there are a number of neurological disorders that are degenerative that, that we don't understand a whole lot about and the brain is so very complicated. So when next Nancy Wexler discovered the gene for Huntington's disease, it just opened up this entire world of understanding because now that you have a gene that you can target, which is not true in, in a lot of the other neurological disorders, um, it just it just brings up all this this possibility for discovering how to maybe stop the gene, find out what the gene is doing and how it works, and maybe stop the the overproduction of proteins, stop the brain cell loss. So there's. What's exciting to me is every time I get an update about the research of Huntington's, they're working on each and every one of those levels. And there's very, very dedicated people, there's lots of grant funding, and then the other folks in the other camps of neurological disorders are looking to Huntington's disease because we do have this gene that we can track. Um, so it's, it's very exciting. I think within two years there'll be something that keeps the progression at bay, honestly. I, I, fingers crossed. It's looking very hopeful. Well, um, so this morning I got a call um, from the genetic counselor and she told me that we, um, we got the results in. So 
uh, yeah, we're gonna go today and at 3.30 we're gonna see if I have it or not. So, yeah, great. I'm super nervous, um, but I think we've talked about it like a ton. <laughs> These last, it's been three and a half weeks that we've been waiting for the results. So, um, I think we've talked about it a lot. We've talked about whether it was positive, what we would do, if it was negative, what we would do. And he always tells me that, you know, it's not, not gonna change anything. So, and it's not, I mean, I'm, if it's positive, I'm just gonna continue living my life mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and do the things that I've always wanted to do, um, aspire to be the person, the journalist that I wanna be. Um, so I'm, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, but I, I'm glad that I decided to do this today um, because I just wanna get it out of the way. But it doesn't matter if it's positive. Boo-hoo, life goes on. If it's negative, boo-hoo, life goes on. <laughs> Great. Yeah. This is really just to find out how we're going to have kids. In the natural way or IVF. Mm -hmm. And then we'll still grow old together. You open it up. Okay. okay. Sorry. With a positive result and a CAG repeat of 42, I can expect to become symptomatic in my early 40s. People say I'm a lot like my dad and my grandma. We have the same eyes, the same nose, the same sense of humor, and the same genes. The same unstable DNA segment, the same 42 repeats.